you guys, if you watched my previous videos, you'd know that pottery is something that I really wanted to do this summer and I'm glad I went to learn some pottery hand building fundamentals from the School of Clay Arts. I wanted to share my experience and what I learned so I hope you enjoy and hopefully get inspired to pick up pottery or any other skill that you've been meaning to try out on your own. So in the first lesson, we were taught to make a pinch pot and what I love about this place and the instructor is that you can tell she's so passionate about what she does. She talked about how people value a polished wheel thrown piece but she finds handmade things, things which have some asymmetry, very charming and I think that's so true. One important lesson that I learned right from the get go is that preparation of the clay is most important and the wedging allows you to get any air pockets out of the clay so that it doesn't explode in a kiln. I also learned the importance of repetition. Repetition leads to permanence and I think this applies to so many things in life as well. After wedging the clay, the instructor would also periodically give a demo of the next step to do. I followed her and poked a hole in the ball of clay and placed it in the center of the bending wheel. After that, I started to pinch the walls in a repetitive motion. But I grew impatient and the instructor could tell with just a few touches of my clay. So I slowed down and paid attention to committing to one action and repeating it. Slowly, the pot formed and also the clay started to dry out. I cut the top off and also tried again with a new batch of clay. I didn't like the outcome so I smashed it and tried again and the instructor saw that I did that and she was so sweet. She told me that it was not a bad piece and I should have more confidence in myself and like girl am I in a pottery lesson or some motivational class because I'm learning things for life. <laughs> but anyway my first lesson was quite a humbling experience and I reflected that pottery is one of those things that looks easy but it's actually pretty damn difficult. Besides getting the right moisture, sponge angle, wrist pressure, depth calculation, etc. It requires so much patience to wedge and prepare the clay. And just imagine God doing that for each of us. Like Isaiah 64 verse 8 says, Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. How amazing is that? In the second lesson, we used an even softer clay and we did something completely different. We had to make a bowl or some kind of vessel using the hand coiling method. We employed the use of the extruder as well, which you'll see me struggling with later on. Once again, I started by preparing the clay and wedging it and flattening it on the bending wheel. After the base was flattened, I cut out a circle and took away the excess clay. Then it was time to use the extruder to get some perfect long tubes, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Then we had to coil it around the base and pinch it in place. I thoroughly enjoyed this process, it was so therapeutic. about seven to eight layers in total but we went to see the instructor do a demo and we were all in a trance like we were all stunned at how hand building can lead to such a pretty piece I then went back to the bench to try it out, but I was too scared to use force on my clay. But the instructor came over to help me get more comfortable with asserting dominance on my bowl. Once the mouth of the bowl was widened and the shape of the bowl was formed, I used a damp sponge to smoothen the surface and voila, my second piece is done. I really enjoyed this hand building method and I'd love to try this again and make more bowls, cups and plates in the future. In 
the third lesson, we got to use a different clay once again. This one was a lot harder than the ones used in the previous weeks. The clay came straight from the bag and there was no need to really wedge it, but we had to flatten it. So we used this technique where we just flipped the flattened clay back and forth, <laughs> kind of like a fish. Like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I think the video speaks for itself. After that, I did a rough flattening with my hand and it had to go through this machine thing. I can't remember what it's called, uh, but I think it's like a clay roller or flattener. So I used that and brought back the clay to do more flattening using one of the tools that was given. The studio has a few molds, so we got to pick one to use. I decided to do a rectangular plate, so I cut out a rough shape and placed the clay on top of the mold. And once again, with repetitive motions, I press the edges down. While waiting for the clay to take its shape on the mold, we got to try another kind of clay and create whatever we wanted to. I chose to make a small dish and unintentionally created this thing with a fancy lettuce rim but it wasn't really even and I definitely rushed the process so this was when I learned another life lesson Don't rush, especially when you're not sure if you can do it So I scrapped the piece and tried again. This time I made an oval dish which was a lot easier, a lot simpler, with an indent on one side. You can see the finished piece later on and why I made what I did. Once I was done with my small plate, I removed the rectangular plate from the mold and smoothened the edges using one of the tools provided as well. We actually get a set of tools given to us because I think it's included in the course fees. <laughs> But yes, after I was done, I proceeded to clean up the workspace for the next class. In this last lesson, it was really really different. We didn't have any more pieces to do because this class was reserved for finishing up and glazing the pieces that we made the past few weeks. It's super exciting, I came early and started to sand my pieces which is pretty important because anything that's sharp before being fired in the kiln will end up being even sharper after that. So I sanded my pieces over a bowl of water so that the dust and clay powder would be trapped there. Also, the instructor went through different types of glazes, what they're made up of, how people glaze their wares, etc. We then got to see the instructor do a demo of the glazing process and it was really satisfying to watch. We also had a choice to do some underglaze painting if we wanted to. She said that if our pieces had any cracks, an idea would be to paint the cracks and the finished result can be really beautiful. So I decided to do that because my pinch pot had a lot of little crevices where the underglaze paint could kind of peek through. I just start, okay? You just do your thing. <laughs> 
mixing might take some time, so you really have to. Once I was done with all that, I start to glaze my pieces by dipping it into the solution. Slow down, slow down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, not bad. Okay, well done. There were several colors, but I chose the mother of pearl and blue options the most, just because I think those were the more popular colors and safer options. But I'm not gonna lie, seeing how spontaneous the other people in class were gave me a lot more confidence to be experimental and creative. Like I saw one girl using a brush to flick specks of green onto her plate and I was like, whoa. And I also saw others try bolder colors like yellow and black, so it was just a really fun time. I felt like all of us were just crowding around the glazes and having fun. The instructor also talked about firing the clay pieces in the kiln and showed us some examples of past works. Some pieces were more vibrant while others were more subdued despite having used the same glaze. So a lot of factors come into play like how thick the glaze layer is, where in the kiln the piece was placed, and so on. Then there was something that the instructor mentioned which was kind of profound. She said sometimes leaving things to chance can lead to unique and beautiful results. And I think that's so true. Now on to the collection of my pieces. We could start collecting our pieces from the following week onwards and I went as soon as I could because I was really curious to see how the pieces turned out and also because I would be really busy so I wanted to go early. And you guys probably saw some of this footage in my previous vlog. Do check it out if you haven't yet. I think I had some pretty good memories there and important reflections on uni life and grades etc. I went to collect my pieces and I'm so thankful for the instructor. Uh, it's like, I think it's my pinch pot. It's oh. just like super amazing this time. <laughs> She's so kind and patient and really treats your work with care. I'm not super proud of my pieces, but I think it was a valiant first attempt. Okay, honestly, I think the glazing, like she said, was really unpredictable. So I am not too pleased with some of the pieces. But I think my best piece is definitely the bowl. So at least I have one good one. I'll go home and take a closer look. But in the meantime, let's get home. I want to show you guys the pottery. I'll go through each piece that I got. Maybe I'll show this one first. So this is just a rectangular plate with rounded edges. And the color turned out a bit muddy. I wish I didn't do the splotches because I thought it would be really nice and it show up like an abstract painting but it ended up looking a bit messy a bit splotchy and muddy but i think this color combination is quite nice like if i had just made it like maybe half or three quarters pink and the other part green i think that would have been really nice but yeah i think this is pretty functional it's just a plate the next one is this smaller plate and it has this little groove or indent over here because i wanted to use this for sushi or something six makis here and i could put the sauce in here and just use it to dip and i thought that is pretty cool pretty cool i have this pinch pot so it was the first piece that i made in the first lesson i believe so we were just using the bending wheel i just made a, a really simple pot i think it's not too bad it cracked a little on some sides and the color is not the most pretty either but i think i put a paint or under glaze which is why it came out brown and burnt looking but i think it's quite okay it goes well with the blue i guess this part's fine this part looks nice and finally this bowl, I think the inside looks so good <laughs> considering. I think this is my best piece and the outside is just like this. I wish I would have like created it more curved here because now it's like you, you get. <laughs> if I were to do this again, I would make it more curved. This is a functional bowl and I'm quite happy with the color as well. So yes. Mm -hmm.